The search of large areas, especially under fire conditions, limited visibility, can be time consuming and downright dangerous. So through the use of special equipment and some not so special training, we can make that large area search go much faster and be a much safer operation. All it requires is some rope and a little bit of training, which we're gonna cover right now. So on each frontline piece, we have the exact same large area search setup. It's just a 200 foot bag of 3 8 inch rope. Every 20 feet, there's a two inch steel ring. And on either sides of the bag, we have 20 feet of search rope. Uh, the bags on the side have a large steel clip, hook, carabiner, and the main search bag just has a small steel carabiner in the front. That's for attaching to the exterior of the building. So the way these bags are set up is to have the officer be the bag man, and then you have your two firefighters be a searcher, either on the left hand or the right side. So take the bag, you'd want to take your clip, and you're going to attach this clip somewhere on the outside of the building, a safe place, preferably not on a piece of apparatus, put it on something that's not going to move, it's stable. This is our lifeline to the outside. Once this clip is in place, we'd advance the bag into the building. We'd want to allow enough room on either side for our searchers but in a large scale building, that shouldn't be a problem. So we have a left hand searcher and a right hand searcher. Each one is gonna be equipped with 20 feet of rope and a large steel hook. So all the bags are set up pretty much the same. Very minor differences between them. Check yours out, make sure you're familiar with it and uh, definitely train on it because this is a, a skill that you might have to brush up on from time to time, just like everything else that we do. So this large hook is meant to provide a good handhold. It's also a good opportunity to manage your rope. You can wrap the rope around the hook. The whole idea with the 20 foot section of rope is to keep it taut at all times back to the, the main bag. If you don't keep the rope taut, the communication between the bag man and the searchers is gonna break down and the search is gonna go wrong. So to pull off a large area search smoothly, there's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to do. The bag man is gonna to wanna to maintain contact with the bag at all times. You wanna keep it out in front of you. The best way to do that is probably to take this strap, put it right over your gear, and have it in front of you like this. This way you can keep your lifeline to the outside nice and taut. That's your way out, remember? And as you advance the bag into the building, you can kinda of pay it out and you have control of the bag. So when we reach our first ring, we're gonna, we're gonna make a stop at that point and we're gonna have our searchers make a sweep. Now remember those sweeps are gonna be 20 foot arcs off of the main bag here. 20 feet is so that we're never really that far, but we don't wanna be 50, 100 feet away from our crew. So 20 foot is a good number. That's gonna get us good coverage in most buildings. So. We have our bag in place. We have a searcher on either side. We want to maintain that this rope is fairly taut to the outside. One way you can do that is by utilizing your knee. You can take your knee and put it down on the rope and it'll maintain tension on that line. Your searchers are gonna take one of the rope bags on either side and they're gonna begin their search. Now it's important once again for them to maintain uh, tension back to the main bag here because your role as the bag man is to keep track of your searchers and control the bag. That's simple. Control the bag, maintain contact with your searchers, and you're going to get a nice thorough search fairly quickly. So the job of the searchers is to take your line, you want to pay it out completely, max it out, go the full 20 feet if you can, ideally, and we're going to keep Nice tension from your line here all the way back to the main bag. If you can't fully extend the full 20 feet, you're gonna to wanna to take up some slack. You can wrap it around the hook like this. That works for some folks. Other people like to simply take it and just coil it in their hands. This is something you have to practice. It can be a little cumbersome at first, especially because 
you have the rope in one hand, you're definitely going to have a search tool in the other, right? So practice this. It's not hard to do. It just takes a little bit of practice. Go slow with this. Don't try to rush it. It's, it's really effective if you take the time to do it right. So your job is to make sure that this rope is tight. You're going to do your sweeps, your arcs, and you're going to listen for communication on this rope. That communication is going to come from the person working the main line, and there's also some communication you can give back to the person on the bag as well. Ideal situation, you'll be able to communicate verbally with that person on the main line. That's not always the case depending on the fire condition and other ambient noise in the building. You know, fire alarm system, equipment running, saws, etc. So you can communicate verbally or through communication via tugs on the rope. In regards to communication using rope, we don't want to overcomplicate it. We want it to be very simple and clear. So we use the OATH method, just like in water rescue, dive rescue, it's the O-A-T-H method. The O is a simple one tug on the rope, one good clean tug on the rope that indicates that everybody's okay. You know, if I'm the bag man and I give one tug on the rope to my searcher, I'm asking him, hey, are you okay? Are you there? Are you good? And in return, they're going to communicate by pulling on the rope once, and that's going to signal that, yes, I'm okay, I'm good. The A in oath stands for advance. So if I give a tug to the rescuer, that means I want them to keep going, continue the search, move on. And uh, if I receive two tugs from my rescuer, that means that they want more slack. They may have something in sight, or they think they have an object that's just outside of their reach. Uh, so we can go ahead and extend their reach a little bit, either by letting out a little bit more rope on the main line and moving toward, you know, toward their location, or we can simply recall our other rescuer. See, our, our rescuer on the right-hand side needs to advance. They need more slack. I can recall my rescuer on the left back to me and send them out to assist that other uh, searcher. So that's the A. The T stands for take up, take up slack, or I'm coming back to the bag. Uh, it can also indicate that uh, they found something. So if I receive three tugs from my searcher, that's going to tell me that they've found an object, um, and I might send my other searcher up to assist them, or maybe move up the line and communicate with them face to face. Uh, the H is universal. Four tugs, four tugs always means help. If we have four poles on the rope, we know that something's gone wrong. Uh, we'd have to call a mayday and get assistance out to that searcher. So now that you know the oath method, I'm going to show you how to communicate using the rope. So I have a searcher on either side, left and right. And as they start to make their arcs, I can give them two tugs to let them know, go ahead. You can see I have communication with my rescuers. I can give them two here. That's going to let them know he's midline. And as my searcher on the right continues to advance, I, I know exactly where they are just from the position of the rope. When that searcher reaches midline, I can again give him two tugs, and he's going to know he's reached the midline. I can go ahead and move the bag up to the next 20-foot position, and we can start our sweeps again. So it's a very simple communication process using that oath method. I have accountability where my searchers are, and I can communicate them through those tugs on the rope. Okay, so searching an aisle. That's going to require two crews. So we'd have a crew on the main line here, maybe picture a supermarket where you're searching along the aisle where all the cash registers are, or a Lowe's, or in any kind of building of that type. One crew is taking care of the aisle along the cash register area. We'd send another crew in with the same setup, same exact setup, same exact search. They're going to move along that other team's line until they locate an aisle. Once they look at that aisle, they're going to clip their bag off, like we clipped off to the outside with this one. We would put this clip on that other team's line, and we could move down those aisles. Now, we know most aisles are around 100 feet in length, uh, usually not more than that, but certainly possible. Uh, so around 100 feet, we know we got 200 in the bag, we really have to pay attention to air management and all those other firefighter survival skill things 
it's really a risky situation. You have to weigh the fire conditions, you know, and your crew before making a decision to get too far into the building. But the nice thing is searching off rope, that's going to give us that lifeline out and allow us to not duplicate our efforts. We have crews searching specific areas on rope. We use the rope to mark those areas that we searched and uh, we're going to get it done much quicker. Now earlier in the video I mentioned the knots on the rope. There's a ring, steel ring, two inch steel ring every 20 feet. There's also knots. So this is the first knot we find. We're obviously 20 feet in the building and sequentially as we move along the rope we're going to come to another ring and two knots. The two knots means we're 40 feet inside the building. And the next ring that we meet, 60, right? Um, it's a good idea to dedicate to your memory the knots go towards the fire and they do not go towards the exit. The ring side will lead you out of the building. The knots will get you into trouble, okay? Knots towards the fire. The knots do not go towards the exit. The rings will take you outside. Ring return. So try to remember that, dedicate that to memory. Every knot that you find is 20 feet, all the way up to the 200 foot mark in this bag. There might be certain situations where you need to branch off and maybe stop at a certain point, change direction, uh, whatever that might be. You can do that simply by creating your own ring in the rope or loop. Just create a simple overhand knot in the rope and uh, that's gonna allow you to clip off to that overhand knot you want to practice this with a glove hand. It's not that easy to do, especially if you haven't done it for a while. So an overhand knot in the rope, that's going to provide another space where then uh, you could now have one of your searchers unclip from the bag here, clip into this rope, and now you have a, another point to search off of. A little more complicated, not that crazy, but it allows you to expand the system to work for you in different layouts and different environments. So you really want to be comfortable with the bag and where the rings are so you can feel them with a gloved hand and clip in without having to look at it. It's, it's really helpful. So uh, take a couple minutes, go out to the bay, put some gloves on, close your eyes, and just feel your way around the bag, get used to where the carabiners are, how to clip into the bag. And it could definitely help you out in your next large area operation. So hopefully this video gives you a basic idea of large area search techniques. This is just one technique. There's certainly many others, but this should be a good foundation to build off of. Train on this, get better at it. It could definitely save your life, save someone else's life, and uh, good luck.